What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Son of a Tech once again, and today we're going to check out the PC performance for none other than the latest and greatest Dead Rising 4, and we're going to be checking it out with both the GTX 1066 gigabyte and the RX 488 gigabyte. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so the test bench is going to be an i7-3770K mated to an ASUS P8Z77 motherboard with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 clocked at 1600 megahertz. The game will be running on a PNY 500 gigabyte solid state drive and it will all be powered by a Corsair AX860i. All of the settings are going to be in 1080p, 1440p, and 4K and they will all be at the high settings, not highest available, but the actual high preset. The only changes we're going to make here is VSync off, of course, because we want to be able to get the upper end of those frame rates. And we're going to be turning off anti-aliasing as it did pretty much hit the frame rate a little bit too much and didn't feel playable to me at 1080p with it on. And then we did knock down anisotropic filtering to times 4. Um, it can go all the way up to 16, I believe, actually at high times four is the default. The benchmark is going to be a little out of the norm because the game does kind of randomly generate enemies and it's kind of hard to gauge what's going to be happening. But essentially we're going to be starting out from that first little safe house area where you enter into and then we're going to go back up and kind of backtrack and we're going to go into a pirate ship and then right outside that pirate ship if we drop down there's a huge horde of zombies and we're just going to fight them. I have eight um, pretty much I guess uh, what are they called blow blow up darts bl bl blow arrows <laughs> anyways I crafted them. We're going to go ahead and shoot all eight of those into the center of the zombies because that seems to generate the biggest frame drops. And we're going to do that with every card and then we're going to continue to play for two minutes straight. Once the two minutes is done, we are good. How are we capping this? Because this is a UWP game and Fraps doesn't detect the direct x hooks well good question if you guys want to check it out i actually have a tutorial using an application called present mon and you can check that out up here and it's free to use and i actually have it on my google drive if you want to download the installer instead of having to compile that installer yourself from github so Let's hop into the numbers here. Starting out at 1080p, the RX 480 had a minimum FPS of 39 with an average of 61.7 and a max of 102.5. While on the GTX 1060, we saw a minimum of 47.8 with an average of 67.7 and a max of 96.9. So it didn't actually have the higher top or max FPS than the RX 480. However, it does seem to perform quite a bit more stably than the RX 480 at 1080p and so I'm gonna have to give the win here to the GTX 1060 in this case. Things do get a little bit more interesting though at 1440p where the RX 480 had a minimum FPS of 33.7 with an average of 49.4 and a max of 76.5 while on the GTX 1060 we had a minimum FPS of 36.5 with an average of 44.7 and a max of 65.2. Now this is an interesting one since that minimum FPS isn't that far off and is still above the 30 FPS and yet we have a higher average frame rate. I'm going to have to almost give the win here or at least also just from objectively playing. I, I felt like the RX 480 performed better at 1440p. So moving on to 4K finally it's this is um, this is super interesting. The RX 480 won here pretty handily all across the board with a minimum of 21.7 FPS, an average of 26.6, and a max of 37.8, while the GTX 1060 couldn't even maintain above 20 FPS with a minimum of 19.6, an average of 23.9, and a max of 34.3. In conclusion, typically we see a lot of these UWP games 
perform better for the AMD side of things. But in this case, it appears that at that 1080p kind of 60 FPS sweet spot, we're going to be wanting to lean more towards the NVIDIA side with the GTX 1060. However, things start to get kind of debatable at 1440p and then just outright in AMD's favor in 4K. However, I don't think you'd be purchasing either one of these cards in 4K uh, to play 4K, I should say. Yeah, I, I think that it's it's going to be up to you. Both of these cards play Dead Rising 4 about as well as the competition does. So, you know, choose your weapon, go into battle and have some fun fighting some zombies and some with some quirky weapons and so on and so forth. A couple notes on just overall game performance. If you're going to be bumping anything up, even with like, a, it almost has that hitching issue that Forza Horizon 3 had on SSDs. So solid state drives, if you bump the textures above high, seems to start causing some sort of hitch. So yeah, if you're going to pick this game up, I'm going to recommend no matter what card you're playing it on to keep it at high texture settings. And another really weird one is the mirror quality. If you turn that up, even if there's no mirrors present in the environment that you're currently playing in, it still takes a huge hit on the FPS and I'm not sure why. So I just turned that down as well in my final settings. Hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below and I will see you next Tuesday.